Gran Turismo 7 releases today, March 4th, for PS4 and PS5 consoles. In this video, I'm going to share 10 tips that will help you with your experience of the game. Take it as a beginner's guide to GT7. If you do find this video helpful, drop a like rating down below as it will help recommend this to others and consider subscribing for more Gran Turismo content. Starting off with the career mode, it's a no-brainer that most of your time with GT7 will be spent here. The cafe is where you'll unlock everything such as all the areas of the world map, new racetracks, missions, licenses, you get the point. Outside of multiplayer, if you want to do some arcade racing, you'll actually need to sink some time into the career. Most of the menus from the cafe will be focused on the car collection, meaning you need to earn three specific cars from a manufacturer. Once you've completed a menu, you'll then be given a reward and move on to the next one. As mentioned in the first point, world circuits are unlocked from playing through the career mode. There are three regions to choose from with a total of 34 locations within the game at launch. You can also play tracks that you may not have unlocked yet through the license center or the missions. At the time of recording, I'm level 20 and I still don't have all of the tracks unlocked as you should see on screen at some point throughout the clip. So if you do want all of the tracks, you're going to have to grind the game. The leveling system has been scrapped from Gran Turismo 7 and replaced with the collector level instead. Each time you collect a new car, your rep will increase and depending on the value of the car, you'll gain little to lots of XP towards it. Each time you level up, you'll be awarded anything from driver gear, roulette tickets and new missions. Like prior GT games, tuning has returned, but this time it is a huge focus on how you'll race, so make sure you're always tuning your cards beforehand. You'll want to do this especially when it comes to multiplayer, which I'll go into more detail later on. There are lots of different upgrades for your car, so in going into a race of a max PP of let's say 600, you'll want to upgrade your car as close as possible to this. Then from your garage, depending on the parts you installed, you can then tweak them to your preference, which sometimes will either lower or increase the PP of your car. As well as tuning, customization is now back and heavily improved upon within the game. And depending on some of the upgrades you add to your vehicle, you might have an extra customization option such as spoilers and even changing the paint of your brake calipers. When playing GT7, you'll be awarded a large part of your car collection for free. Cars are mainly earned from completing menus from the cafe as you'll earn three at a time. Outside of that, you can also earn them by completing missions, licenses, circuit experiences, and if you're lucky, roulette tickets. The roulette tickets also range in rarity, so the higher the star also means the value of the car as a potential award will increase. Those are the only ways to get free vehicles at the moment, so the only other way is of course to buy them, which leads me on to my next point. This may change the more you progress with the game, but it's currently a lot harder to earn credits compared to GT Sport. You'll be awarded varying amounts of credits depending on the race events, missions and so on. When racing, if you drive clean, you'll actually get awarded a 50% credit bonus after the race ends. And when you complete a championship set of races from the career mode, you'll also get a bonus if you win overall. The one downside to this is you may not be able to buy as many cars as you'd like, especially if you get a specific manufacturer invitation that expires after a time period or if you want to purchase a legendary car. Of course vehicles like that are usually very expensive so not having the funds might suck for the collectors out there. When playing GT7, I noticed that there are a few differences when driving compared to GT Sport. The physics of the cars are improved upon, so you need to adjust your drive style to get used to it. For example, when braking, your car will travel in more of a straight line than in Sport, depending on the pressure. And also, when coming out of a corner, the car will also accelerate in a straighter line than previously. You'll also need to be precise with your throttle when going through a windy part of the track or going around a corner, as you can easily oversteer or even fully spin out more than before. Gran Turismo 7 definitely feels like more of a sim game compared to sport and in all honesty I actually really prefer it but yeah I'm still getting used to it now and I do spin out every now and again. 
From the settings menu, you're able to change the AI difficulty with three different options. Depending on how comfortable you are with this game, you can either go for an easy experience, normal, which most players will more than likely have this selected, or hard, making all the world circuit races you do a proper challenge. However, the AI difficulty doesn't change the amount of credits you'll earn, so you don't have to worry about that. It's mainly down to your personal preference. If you're playing GT7 on a PS5, there are two graphics options in the display settings menu, either performance providing better frame rate or quality, which focuses on ray tracing. Personally, I'd keep this set to performance for a constant 60 frames. In a way, you do also get this from the quality mode, but sometimes depending on the track and the environment settings, you may have a slight dip in the frames if there's a lot going on. However, the quality mode is actually spot on when it comes to replay or photo mode, and with the ray tracing, it looks absolutely stunning. And lastly, a couple of pointers for multiplayer and sport mode for those interested. Probably the most important one, but make sure your cards are tuned and upgraded to the highest possible rating for the selected race. Most players will be doing the same, otherwise you'll end up coming last. I did actually experience this on one of my first races I did. Completely forgot to upgrade the car I used, and you can probably imagine how that went. Penalties also make a return to sport mode, and they're also very similar to what they were like in the previous Gran Turismo game. So if you cut corners or play recklessly, you will get a penalty. And there we go, a beginner's guide to Gran Turismo 7. If you have any more tips that I may have missed in this video, pop them in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy your GT7 experience. Until next time, take care.